Welcome to our Jesus Power Hour. We're going to have a great time here tonight. We have a very interesting title for the message, and that is Instructions on How to Pray. How many of you feel like you know how to pray already? But we can always learn more. We can always learn more. And I was just telling Pastor Jeanette a few minutes ago as the Lord was pouring this into me, I guess it was this past week or week before last, and every time I'd close my eyes and the Lord would begin to do this, but I wasn't an adult. I was a little little bitty blonde-headed girl, about like that, and everything that, that he showed me in that was with a, a child. So I said, Lord... <laughs> I guess to us, we're his children, huh? So, and compared to his wisdom. So I could get into it right now, but I won't because we have some great announcements. We're going to call Anthony. And he's going to bring the announcements to us. Good evening. I have the upcoming announcements. Um, a thank you from Pastor. Senior Pastor Wanda Bishop and the staff would like to give a big thank you to all the volunteers, helpers, and anyone who had a hand in making this year's Vacation Bible School such a big success. Vacation Bible School Children's Program will be Wednesday, July 20th. The children will give a special presentation proceeding after the message. The children will showcase the songs, crafts, and powerful lessons they learned throughout Vacation Bible School. You are sure to be blessed. Upcoming messages, Sunday, Bishop Drew will be in the pulpit preaching three things you cannot do without. Many things in life are optional, but there are three things in your life you must have as a Christian. Come out Sunday and find out what they are. Next Wednesday, Bishop will be preaching a very short message entitled Spiritual Home Safety. The Vacation Bible School program will be following. Come out and get for a great teaching and support your young youth ministers youngest ministers, sorry. <laughs> Friday night message, Senior Pastor Wanda will be in the pulpit preaching covenant names of God. Don't miss next Friday's message. Continue, while she continues her course, the power of the intercessor, God reveals his character and his nature through the names he gives himself. God wants to reveal himself to you. Come out and learn about the character of God and how to get your prayers answered. Thank you, Anthony. I love to watch the young people be involved because he's a, a minister in training. And he gets called on at the last minute. He had no idea that he was going to step up there and talk. And so he, I'm going to tell off on him. He had a little T-shirt on. And now I found out. I said, where's Anthony? He's gone to the car to find his shirt. So <laughs> God is good. God is good. Well, the, if you have your instruction sheet, those of you that just came in, if you didn't get an instruction sheet, hold your hand up and the ushers will get one to you right away. Tonight, the, uh, as I said earlier, the title of our message is Instructions on How to Pray. Jesus is our mediator. He's our intercessor. He's our advocate. And he's our Lord. He teaches us, he gives us instructions on how we are to pray. Number one, if we wish to be sure of reaching the throne of God, I'm talking about with our prayers, we must come to God according to the rules laid down in his word. You see it on the overhead. I'm going to repeat it. If we wish to be sure of reaching the throne of God with our prayers, we must come to God according to the rules laid down in his word. Okay? Number two. No place in the Bible is it recorded that Jesus told his disciples to pray to him. And number three, they were always 
to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And number four, Jesus said, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. That's John 16, 23 through 24. Notice that Jesus said, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Jesus said this just before he died and rose again to sit at the right hand of the Father on our behalf. Jesus also said, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. John 16 and 23. Jesus was talking about his um, mediator position at the right hand of the Father, where he would soon ascend and be seated. Another translation of John uh, another translation of John 16, 23 reads, In that day you shall not pray to me. I don't have that one written down here, but I'm going to get it and, and let you know. Jesus said we are to ask the Father in his name. Anybody feel any tension? I can see it on the faces. That's because you don't understand where I'm going. Just hang in there and you'll, you'll be doing the same thing I'm doing later. Jesus said that we're to ask the Father in his name. So when I pray, I say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the holy name of Jesus. Jesus is our credentials. And I'll be explaining a little later that we could not even come into the presence of God if we did not have Jesus. He's our, our credentials. There isn't any other way to approach God except through Jesus. He made it possible. Be sure that we can worship Jesus don't get that mixed up with, with what's referred to in the Bible as prayer because we certainly can, can worship the Lord. We can worship him, love on him, tell him how much we appreciate the fact that he became our credentials, how he made it possible for us to come into the presence of a merciful God. Without him, we couldn't do it. We can tell Jesus how much we love and appreciate him. But when it comes to praying and asking, we must ask the Father. Everybody got that? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15 also tells us, quote, For this cause I bow my knee, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I know when I pray, for years and years and years, I didn't, uh, I didn't bow down to pray. And, and it's not something you have to do. It's by choice. But I remember my grandmother. She had so many grandkids. And she would, she, her name was Effie, E-F-F-I-E. -E. And Mama prayed until she called the last one by name. And Papa's, be, their bedroom was uh, a little further over in the house, and Mama would always go into what she called her canning 
closet where she had all the shelves lined with it, all the canned goods for the winter. But Mama would pray, and she would pray out loud. And you'd hear, if we'd, we'd giggle as kids. We were there in, in, in the bed, and we'd hear Papa, Effie, Effie, how much longer are you going to be? And she just ignored it and went right on and prayed <laughs> and prayed. But Mama was always on her knees, and her cr prayer cloth was her little white apron. She would take that little white apron, and that's what she'd dot her tears with and, and love the Lord. Lord, I wish I had that little white apron today. What I wouldn't give to have it. Just to have it, I'd, I don't know if I'd frame it or hang it or what. Dear, dear, I dab my tears with it is right. <laughs> Number five. No, let, let me back up just a minute. I know when I get on my knees to my Heavenly Father in prayer and present my credentials, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I am, I, I am immediately recognized as family. Number five, believers are in the family of God. Many people know about praying to God, but they don't know anything about praying to the Father. They never go to the Father. Father, I thank you, Heavenly Father. They just go to God. And I'm going to tell you something. Number six, he may be God to the world, but he's father to me. And I thank God for that. I'm so thankful that Jesus would pay the price he paid in order for us to come into the presence of the Father. Number seven, there is real joy and peace knowing the Father will answer our prayers. Back in the day, when cassettes were popular. Anybody remember the little cassettes? No CDs. I mean, we didn't even like the CDs when they came in. How dare they? We had the little cassettes. <laughs> I would hurry to my car at noon. Uh, I worked in Shreveport and, and up on the top roof. Uh, top, or yes, the roof happens to be on the top. You knew that, huh? <laughs> up top, they had the open uh, place up there to park all the cars and so we'd take the elevator up and head out to the cars of two or three of us and I'd put my cassette I always had it right there and I had Bible prayer studies from Brother Kenneth Hagen how many of you have ever heard of Brother Kenneth Hagen precious precious brother that was back in the 70s now okay by the time 1 o'clock came, I was so pumped up. I could have spread my wings, and I think I could just fly down the hallway because, I mean, I got back in there knowing there is nothing impossible for God. Just trust him. And I mean, Brother, Brother Hagen had some beautiful, beautiful stories to tell. And the CDs... And the anointing that would come off of those, not CDs, but cassettes, the anointing that would come off of them would just feel your heart and you'd feel the presence of the Holy Spirit for hours later. And just meditating on the fact that I, a mother of three little girls, alone, had become part of the family of God, a believer. I mean, that was something to crow about. That was something to praise God about. I had been accepted into the family of God. Had a father who would never leave me. Unless you've had it happen to you, you have no idea what it feels like to be left. Because I knew when I'd come out through that door and get on that elevator, everything, everything is going to be all right. 
because my father said he'll never leave me and never forsake me, and there's nothing that he can't do. Glory to God. My earthly father had committed suicide when I was 14, and it left me with a lot of guilt feelings because I was the oldest child. The devil makes you feel like you should have prevented it. I've ministered to many, many people, and they'll tell you same things, some of the same things that I went through. You should have said something. You should have known this was coming. You should have known. Even though you're just a child, the devil torments children too. Oh, but when I was a little over twice that age, I met my heavenly father the one who promised I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And he has proven to be so, so true to his word because of what Jesus did for us, because Jesus was willing to die for us, to shed his blood, to take the stripes on his back to the point that when the, when the whip would hit him and, and, and I read recently in st some of the study that they would put these guys that handle the whip in whether they're first place, second place, or whatever. And you know how they determined who was first, second, third? They weighed the flesh that was on the ground at the end of the day when they had been working. That's how they because there was a, a metal hook or some type of hook at the end of each one, and it would grab the flesh, and they knew if it hit and they jerked it a certain way, it would rip and tear the flesh. Jesus paid a price we couldn't pay. He did something for us, and the, the longer we live and serve him, the more that picture becomes clear in our heart, in our mind. How he loved us and how he loved the Father. How he wanted to please the Father. He became our Lord. He became our credentials to enter into the presence of Almighty God, our Father. So we should, anytime we go into prayer and we go with showing our credentials, thanking and praising Jesus. Don't forget to thank him for the fact that you can even enter into the presence of a holy God. So quickly, so quickly my heavenly father brought clarity to my mind and I no longer felt guilt and I no longer felt anger. It was like even at, at that 14 years later, 15 years later, there were still seeds that were there that would replay over and over and over in my mind. But God just reached in and took it off. Just reached in and removed it. Just his presence, just saying, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. And brought so much love with him. Don't forget to thank him. He brought peace that passes understanding. I don't know how many little batteries that I had to buy and how many cassette players I wore out, but I can promise you it was several of them. I, can't you just see them, the little rectangle-shaped ones with the handle? Remember when they put a handle on? Yay, I mean, <laughs> here we go, here we go. Now we're really good one. <laughs> Living in high cotton now because we had a handle on our cassette. <laughs> but I cut my teeth, my spiritual teeth, um, Brother Kenneth Hagin. And some were Kenneth and, and Glorious, but the truth is, Kenneth and Gloria, they hadn't been saved very long, so they took what they heard from Brother, Brother Hagen, and, of course, he was a pilot for them, and he was, uh, Kenneth was, 
and uh, was at school over there and all of that stuff. So all of that was mixed up on the, or mixed with the messages that were on there. So you felt like you knew them because you, you loved that presence. God's so good. I recall a story that I wanted to share with you that Brother Hagen told about a friend of his, and he had a real struggle in the area of prayer. This man was older than Brother Hagen, and he too was a pastor, but he had a real struggle in the area of prayer. He had been in ministry for years, but he was not receiving answers to his prayers. And this friend knew that Brother Hagen got his prayers answered. Because every time you heard Brother Hagen, that's what he was talking about, was a prayer that God had answered. Always, always giving glory to God. So he brought this man, friend, brought his problem to Brother Hagen. And he let him know that he was confused. He said he had known his brother for years, but he had, he, uh, had just watched, and he was always getting his prayers answered. And he said, I don't know. I must be doing something wrong. And so as, since he had brought it up, uh, Brother Hagen told him, he said, I noticed that you always pray to Jesus instead of going to the Father in Jesus' name. Now, that sounds like it would be simple. It wouldn't matter. But he gave us about five different times where he said, this is how I want you to do it. Go to the Father in my name. Go to the Father in my name. So anyway, brother, he told uh, brother, brother Hagen, told him, he said, I always pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Because that's how Jesus said we're to pray. He said, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever shall be asked of the Father in my name, he will give it you. Remember Jesus said those words, so just take him at his word, is what he told the man. I can't explain any more than that. That's just what Jesus said. Now you have to make up your mind. I'll do what Jesus said, or I'll continue to do it the way I've been doing it. How many of you can say for the truth, I go through some long periods sometime before I get a prayer answered? Have to pray for a long, long time. Yeah, one, one person raised their hand, two people, all of us. <laughs> all of us. So let's just do it his way. Let's glorify Jesus, worship Jesus, because he's certainly to be, to be worshiped and praised. But when he said, go to the Father, I'm your credentials, go to the Father, in my name. Let's do it that way. Number eight. When we don't pray according to how the Bible teaches us to pray, we can block God's answer to our prayers. Brother Hagen's friend had been praying to Jesus instead of to the Father in Jesus' name. And it's hindered his prayers from being answered. In Luke 11, the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And Jesus responded by giving them several principles for prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. We need to pay particular attention to what Jesus said in verse 2. When you say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Number nine, the word hallowed means to set apart, to be praised, and to be worshipped. 
Now, see, when I saw that, that's what got me to thinking about the names, the names of God. When you say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then I looked up what hallowed mean. It means to set apart, to be praised, and to be worshipped. When we come before the Father, we're to praise his name. We're to acknowledge the name, to set his name apart. How many of you in your life, more than once for sure, you told somebody your name and they would sometime pronounce it and say, oh, that's a pretty name. That's a pretty name. I don't know why, but I know that the father, well, I do too. I take that back. I'm sorry, father. He taught me yesterday. I wrote, I wrote it down. But he, he wants us to worship his name because of the fact that as we learn what all is in that name, and I'll be going through this with you next Friday night, but let's say you have, uh, you have a, a need for a particular thing. You should have the names of Jesus handy. There's 12 that he gave to himself. We didn't pick ours, but he picked his. And he knew well what each name stood for. So have your list and get to know it and get to know what it stands for. And you can come to the Father in the holy name of Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price for me to be here and be with the Father. And Father, I thank you that you are, and then you call out the name. And I come to you. I come to you. And then you can go ahead and quote some of these different things that God is with that name. Therefore, my, my dreams and visions and, and belief is stronger because you're telling me that's who you are. You're the one who deals with this. And so I can come and bring my issue. And God will begin to move in a miraculous way with us. We just were a little bit off. A little bit off in some of the, some of the prayer. What number were we on? Number 10. God is a covenant God. And he has revealed who he is by the names he has given himself. He wants us to know who he is from every side. You know, we like to, if someone that we want to uh, be a friend to, we like to get to know them and what their history and what they did and, and who they really are. You feel closer to them if you know those things. And so God knows that the more we know about him and his character and who he really is, the closer we'll feel to him. Number 11, his names reveal his character and his nature. You know what's sad is that our God is more than most people let him be. Our God is more, so much more, than most people will allow him to be. He longs to get to, not only he knows us, but we know him. He longs for our trust. He, he longs for fellowshipping with us. He longs for you to, I don't know about you, but I know I like to just walk. And it's been a, a two-year thing with this mess that, that I'm believing God for. But I'm going to get back to the walking that I love. And I love to pray when I walk. I love to pray. God loves for us to walk and talk with him. Number 12. 
God wants to reveal himself to you in every side of his character. He doesn't want to have any secrets. He wants to reveal himself, who he really is, what he really wants for you, and how he really wants to bless you. Number 13, if you don't learn anything but this, hold on to it. You can know your God. You can know him. If you want to know him, you can. Part of it's my job to teach you, but not all. You have a part in it, too. If we don't know him, if we don't know his names, if we don't know his character or the covenant that we have with him, we can be persuaded to believe lies. That's why you see people in and out and in and out. They'll serve God for a little while, and then, then they get their eye on something else and go. But if we really knew him, intimate relationship with God, those things that are trying to lead you astray wouldn't even have an effect on your life. If anything, you'd just laugh in the face of the devil and continue to serve God. For example, some people believe that God is a force or a power of some kind that's just waiting to punish you. You mess up and there's God with all of his wrath and all of his, you know. He's not any of these things. He's a covenant God who has revealed who he is in his word by his names. And I don't mean just a little phrase after his name, but what does that mean? What is entailed that I understand? That's where we're going to break it down to. That's where we're going to look at it a little closer. Not just memorizing the God and, and, and here, we, here we are, you know. I want you to know him. Know him. So when you go to him asking, a confidence is walking in there with you. you. You'll know that he's going to not only hear you, but be delighted to answer your prayer. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's not any of the things that the world says he is. He's a covenant God. And he purposefully revealed in the word who he is. Number 14, if you carry wrong concepts into your prayers, you will have a weak prayer life with little or, or few results. If you don't have a revelation that our God is Jehovah Rapha, you can believe the lie that God uses sickness to teach people lessons. And that's just not true. I've heard people say, well, maybe God did that to teach them so-and-so. There's not a sign of sickness and disease in Jehovah Rapha. It's not in him. It's not around him. It can't stand in his presence. Number 15. Jehovah Rapha has no sickness in him. Glory to God. Number 16. Sickness is a result of sin, death, and the fall. That's why it's in this world. That's why we have to contend with it as much as we do. Is because of man's fall. Number 17, Jesus has broken the curse of sickness through the cross and the stripes on his back. So now we have a way away from it. We've just got to walk in it. We've just got to take on the tenacity to, 
to say, no, I'm not going to put up with it any longer. Number 18, God wants you to know his character so you will have faith in him and know what you're believing and why you believe it. Remember, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. It's important for us to understand that when the covenant was made with you by Jesus, by Jesus' blood, God gave all that he is to you. He is committed to keep the covenant toward you forever. He's not going to break the covenant. You may break it, but God's not going to break it. In the Old Testament, there are 12 covenant names that God gave himself. They reveal who our God is. Next week, we will continue with revealing the names that God gave himself and the in-depth meanings. I think I might even call on Pauline. How many of you would like to have one of those big cards with all 12 names? <laughs> How many of you are going to pray for Pauline's strength? <laughs> and Maya? <laughs> we'll see about that. I'll sweet talk them, and they will. <laughs> as we meditate on these names, as we become aware of who our God is, really is not something so so he doesn't want to be the untouchable god the unreachable god that's why he took the time and he showed me he showed me so vividly clear that so many times when we enter into his presence for prayer Sure, we're grateful, we are thankful, and he wants us to be, and we should be. But we don't really, really, really know him the way he wants us to know him. But I believe we're going to reach it. I believe that we're going to make it a point, because I'm going to hammer it until you do. We need to become aware of who our God really is and how he wants us to know him. Because if we really learn who he is, where well, we can walk with him and talk with him and, and thank him for this and thank him for that and, and feel his smile and, and hear his laughter and, and have a fellowship with him, and when that, li that happens, our whole life will change. Our whole life will change. There'll be people calling on you from the right and from the left. Because no matter where you go, the Holy One of Israel, he'll be there and he will be in you. He will be around you, but, the, but God, the Father, he's going to be with you. The Spirit of Christ is in us. Amen? How many of you learned something tonight? Well, give him a hand clap. <laughs> it, was, it was a delight to study and I get into these, and I don't know when to stop. But I really don't. Because there's no end to what we can learn. But when we tap into this, and we begin to study and know who he is, somewhere down the line, he's going to show us through his scripture. I know part of it, but I don't know all of it. You know that old saying, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? 
he's going to begin to show us why. And as he shows us why, we won't be able to stand in his presence. We will all be on our knees. Because there's still some things he hasn't revealed to us, but he's going to. And then when he reveals it, we will realize if you had looked at so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so verse, so-and-so, he was trying to tell you. He was trying to tell you. But I'm excited about fresh revelation. I've known it was coming for a long time. That's, I told the Lord, I said, that's probably why you, you allowed me to put up with some of, this, <laughs> some of this mess of not being able to go and do. Because I used to be either going to the hospitals or going to see somebody that was sick. And, and now we have people designated for these, these things. And I said, Lord, is the only way I would stay home for hours and hours and hours and days and days and study my, the word <laughs> but when I didn't have any energy? And he didn't answer me. <laughs> but I believe he wants me strong and whole and just be there with him because I want to be there. Amen? I want to pray for you before we receive offering this, mor this, this morning. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> we want you to join us and receive this prayer because we do thank God that you watch the program. We pray you're blessed by it. Obviously, you're being blessed because you're continuing to watch it. But I'm still looking for you. I'm looking for you to come through these doors one Friday night and say, hey, I've been with you for months or Whatever. Let us get to know who you are. Let us get to know who our family members are. Okay? I believe you'll love it. We do, don't we? Let's give Jesus another big hand clap. Now, one thing before I pray that I want to tell you, be sure that you don't have a misinterpretation and say, well, you're lessening what we're to do for Jesus, and you're doing, that's not what that's doing. It's just in the order that it goes in. Okay? He is our credentials. Without Jesus, we couldn't even talk to the Father. Without Jesus, we couldn't do that. You say, well, they talked to him back in the Old Testament. Stick with the covenant that we're on, and we'll talk about the other later. Okay? We're going to do it. If Jesus said it, how many of you can say, if Jesus said it, I, that's good enough for me? I don't need anybody to come back and, and, and say, well, you can, you can listen to Jesus, or you can listen to, I don't think so. Who were you born again under? In the name of Jesus, he's the one who set us free. He's the one who brought us to the point we're at now. And so, Father, we thank you. We come to you in the holy name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've ever done for us. We thank you, Father, that you are opening our minds. You're opening our hearts. You're causing us to think, to meditate, Father. We thank you that you loved us enough to take the time to take name after name after name. And, and I realize now that when we come to you in prayer, if we know that name, then we, we get a little closer, more one-on-one. -on -one. And so, Father, we're going to study them, and we're really going to get them down in our hearts. And we're going to follow the instructions of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you. We're excited about the, the uh, miracles that are going to begin soon. You showed me that they'll become 
a daily thing, not a once in a while, but a daily thing, even on minute things, very small things, things that might happen for me that would be very small for you and vice versa, but miracles still, miracles just the same. And Father, you showed me that to you it's no more difficult to bring somebody out of a wheelchair than it is to show us where we lost something. You're God. You're God. Nothing is impossible for you. We thank you for the word of God that you left here, our covenant. We thank you for it. We pray that you'll use us in a special way. You'll use us not only to pray for people, but you'll use us to explain to people like, like the brother did with the man that was praying in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. We look forward to this upcoming half of the year and going into next year, Lord. You've got some wonderful, wonderful things in your heart for us. And we look forward to just being a, a part of it. Father, if brother, brother, what was his name? Hmm? Yeah, Brother Hagen. If Brother Hagen could help his friend, if he could help him and, and, and share with him, we can share with others and set them free. But we've got to have the word. We've got to have what we're saying proved. Have your Bible, have your note, and say, here's what it says. And leave people with a consciousness to know it's up to you, just like salvation is. It's up to you. But if you're going to get it, you're going to get it in Jesus' name. If you're going to get this, you're going to pray to the Father. And your credentials are going to be Jesus. You're not going to ask Jesus to do it. You're going to ask the Father to do it. But you're going to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap. We want to receive our offering tonight. And we encourage our live stream to give as well. Many, many of you are sending in now, and that is a blessing because that just means we can send more overseas. We have five different groups that we send monies to regularly, and we have for over 20 years. I think two of those have been exchanged, but for 20 years we've been sending to the missionaries, but for these for years. And we've seen the, the gospel spread, and that's what Jesus told us to do. Go ye into all the earth, all the earth. And with the media that we have today, with the television that we have today, the live stream, we're able for the first time to do that. And that's very, very, very special. We're upgrading ours. We'll have big new cameras coming in here in a short, short time. Just a, just a few weeks. God's so good. So good. But if you're sending and live stream, either send it by Tithely that's there on your phone, or you can mail it in. The address should be on the screen now. Or you can drop it off at the administration building, which is the building next door to us, Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m., 3 p.m., yeah. And we'd still love to see you come slip in on us. God bless you. We pray peace over your home, over your household. Peace that passes all understanding to keep your heart and keep your mind through Christ Jesus. And we're going to name our seed. 
the proper way to pray. The, let's change that to biblical. The biblical way to pray. Okay? And I'm going to write with my spiritual finger because I don't have a phone. <laughs> Bye-bye, live stream. Good having you here.